Scarves, um, more than I can remember, actually, which is a long time now, I guess. Uh, there's this talk about weight all the time now. We've lived in a Formula One world of constantly running ballast and is he underweight or not. Now it's the opposite extreme. And, and A, I want to know why that is, given how much the weight has now been extended anyway, the minimum weight limit. Everybody seems to be struggling. And beyond that, it's kind of bizarre to, to hear about Lewis having a slightly heavier car by a couple of grams because he was running a few more sensors and all this stuff. I mean, w- what's going on with weight in the cars? Why are they so? Why is it so difficult for them now? Well, it's because we've had such big regulation changes, uh, and that affects the teams in two ways. We've got lots of things that have been added to the cars: um, you know, safety, big heavy wheels, wheel covers. Um, you know, huge big floor on the car as well. So you've got things that have added, and the increase in the minimum weight regulation has been increased theoretically to account for that. But what you've also had is because these regulations are so far ranging, the teams have literally had to redesign everything on the car. I'd be surprised if there's anything that hasn't been reviewed as part of the change in the regulations, because you know the gearbox has had some subtle changes, the steering, the suspension, you know, the monocoque, everything has had changes. And um, when you redesign something, um, you know, you'll try and get down to a, you know, an optimised weight, but you'll never get that on the first cut of the design of a part. And the teams will always have to go back and look at these parts and see how they can start to shave weight off once they know what, you know, what the true loads are uh, on the car, what reliability are like mm. on these parts, you know, what, what the, the, the real world is telling them, the data that given the results of where they can shave weight. So the teams will have to do that. And if you remember back to 2014, I can remember having a conversation with you about seat belts that the seat belt manufacturers are being pushed to save a few grams off the metal brackets yeah. on the seat belts. And it's the same situation. There's just everything. And if you've got just one gram over on a thousand components, you know, that's a kilogram. Um, even though some of these cars are shorter, and indeed some of these cars are even shorter than the, uh, the, the, the maximum wheelbase in order to save, you know, a few kilograms. So that's all been going on and there's just so much that the teams can do particularly within the the budget restrictions so as much as teams will always have a weight reduction program ongoing through a season this year they've really had to put some attention in and see where they can get some quick wins and I think taking the paint off the cars has been one quite obvious one that you've seen in the media the cars are all looking much blacker and uh, for me much better for the uh, for the sake of it uh, I think it can be sometimes too much paint on these cars um, and just other areas and then as you say um james allison i think it was was speaking uh with mercedes and saying they wanted to run extra sensors and by the time you kind of average out all the different weights of everything on one car and the the teammates car one of them just ends up being lighter just because of the law of averages and lewis was running some extra sensors some um laser ride height sensors not optical sensors i believe i think that was a a bit of uh, a red herring for us that one and yeah you know you you make your choice do you run overweight or do you mm. you know um uh, get more data mercedes made that choice for lewis in the past race but i think the thing to remember is you know there's there's no regulation that says you have to be at the minimum weight <laughs> you know this is down to the team's wanting performance because you know 10 kilograms of weight on a car can easily add up to you know a couple of seconds in performance so you know it's it's a big thing. So, you know, they're, they're going to have to really work quite hard on this uh, through this early part of the season and get, you know, down to a weight where they're happy that they can race at. And this is another area where Ferrari have done a very good job. Well, again, you know, nobody um, outside the scrutineers and the FIA garage really knows how much all these cars weigh. Um, the rumours suggest that Ferrari are on the, the lighter end, maybe not the lightest, which seems to be teams like uh, Alpine and Alfa Romeo, Alfa Romeo run a shorter car by about 10 centimetres, we believe, to save some weight. Um, and those teams are the ones that are really upset that the minimum weight was raised. You know, Alpine created uh, a quite heavy but stiff floor, but then they were told they can run these uprights. And then all of a sudden, you know, Mercedes have got a floppy floor, um, but can make it work for them. So Alpine are now finding a safety of about four kilograms by lightening their floor, but running external struts there's there's lots of stories red bull changed the front wing end plate um in australia and they said that was for weight saving now you know the foam and the carbon fiber that make up that little small cross section of you know a few square inches of end plate may weigh a few grams but that's that's the, that's the limit teams are going to for this so you know everyone is trying to find weight wherever they can finally scarves there's an interesting battle isn't it between mclaren 
and the factory Mercedes team, obviously McLaren with Mercedes engines as well. We saw Lando out qualify the two factory drivers, and yet in the race, the two, two Mercs dominated. Didn't dominate, but they led home the two McLarens. But it's an interesting, but they're putting their lap time together very differently, right? Yeah, I mean, they're completely different cars in concept. Um, I mean, if you wanted to, to compare and contrast the two most extreme solutions it would be mclaren with its bulky side pod which is much more sort of front end focused much more low drag focused and the mercedes which is much more downforce focused uh, much more rear end focused um you know they're, they're complete extremes um neither solution is really working at the moment and for potentially different reasons mclaren can't seem to be able to create the downforce and mercedes can't seem to exploit the downforce for porpoising um and you know they are in a, a, a fight they seem to be a lot closer um, than perhaps we thought really early at the, so at the end of, of, of testing at the start of the Bahrain Grand Prix, they seem to have come a little bit closer. You can see that Mercedes are operating at a much higher level. They're getting the race results despite everything else. You know, uh, They've had some, some hits with you know, strategy and safety cars, which is well out of their control, but you can see everything else about their race craft was really kind of bringing everything together. I think McLaren seems to be maybe a little bit on the back foot in comparison in their race performances, but I think those two could end up being in a battle um, racing each other while at the same time trying to catch up to the, the Ferrari and Red Bull pack. I did say finally, but I'd just like to end with uh, Fernando Alonso's hydraulics problem in qualifying really quick, really good. And then suddenly going down through the gears, there's just nothing there. The steering gets heavy. I haven't seen that for a while in the middle of a lap. No. Um, and again, I think this is all part of the complete redesign philosophy of these cars this year. You know, you've got the hydraulic system, which, you know, as you as you well know, was one of the biggest uh, reliability problems on an F1 car for, for years and years. Um, in probably the past decade, the teams have really kind of got on top of that. They've really worked, worked out how to operate uh, these systems without having them become unreliable. Uh, but when you redesign everything again, you're trying to save weight. You've got a slightly different engine, probably slightly different vibration pattern. Uh, you've got a different gearbox, so that's got different torsional and vibrational uh, aspects to it. Uh, things shake about and things will break. Hydraulics are one of those things, along with fuel systems uh, and other bits and pieces that teams are now starting to struggle with unreliability. Uh, mm. Again, it's nothing that you can't get on top of. The hydraulic system you can update freely. It's not like part of the power unit of the gearbox. You can change that um, you know, as much as you want. And it, yeah, I think it's just showing just the pressure that these regulation changes, despite the fact that they were delayed a year, um, have put on the teams to get everything right for the you know, first handful of races. And, and if you look at when we last had big regulation changes, the other big difference is the lack of testing before the first few races. This is the first era in which we've had yeah. so little testing, and that's another function of unreliability, of course. Yeah, exactly. You know, we know Alpine had problems with their, um, their their package during testing, which lost them a lot of track time. That's not mm. necessarily the reason they're having the hydraulics problem, but mm. it just goes to show that you've, you you kind of got to be out there testing. And we come up to Imola now, it's a sprint weekend, and that gives the teams almost no time to play about with Nothing. setup changes, new parts and bits and pieces. They've got to get the car ready for qualifying, ready for the run. By then, you know, the weekend's gone. You don't want to be starting to get out the aero rakes and flow vis and sensors and bits and pieces uh, in FP3. It's, you know, it's just too late. So the teams are under a lot of pressure and you've got the, you know, the aero restrictions and the budget restrictions. It's, you know, it's a tough time for the teams. You know, you, you feel like you have to be sorry for them, but I think it's given us a good season. So you can balance that a little bit.